Hello, so in this video we're going to be just having some fun with well-formed formulas. The goal of this is to get us very comfortable with the well-formed formulas. Uh, I have just made the video on negations and conjunctions, so that might be a, a good place to start to get a basic idea. Uh, so remember that in our truth functional language we have uh, we have our letters which stand for declarative statements. Uh, so A, B, C, whatever letters you want to use. Uh, we have uh, our operators. We have our AND, we have OR, NOT, uh, IF, THEN, and our biconditional, IF and ONLY IF. And we remember we can clump, uh, we can clump pairs of uh, well-formed formulas with parentheses brackets and braces. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you what you can and cannot do. I'm not building an argument. I'm not saying what is a valid inference. Uh, we're just going to do something like this. B. That's a well-formed formula. All it's saying is that whatever B stands for, B is true. And if I were to say this, this is a well-formed formula. Uh, not B. This is to say that B is false. If I were to do this, all right, I'm going to ask you, is this a well-formed formula? If you'd like to, pause the video, think about it, and uh, okay, so you've probably come up with an answer. The answer is that this is not a well-formed formula. Whenever you have uh, statements together, so not B, that's one well-formed formula. C by itself is a well-formed formula. But it needs to have some manner of connecting with it. Like every time a well-formed formula should be something that you could speak uh, in English and it makes sense. And if I were to say B, I'm saying B is true. If I said not B, then I'm saying B is not true, or it is not the case that B is true, or simply B is false. If I said this, what am I saying? Not B, C. Now, I might want to be saying AND C, and that would be a well-formed formula, but you would write AND C like this, AND C. So the conjunction is one, so this is what you might notice, the negation can be hooked on and can only ever be hooked on at the beginning of a statement. So this is legitimate. It turns a into not A. Uh, this is an error. This doesn't make sense in our language. It has to be before the A. This is also an error. Uh, a not B. What we might be wanting to say is A is true and B is not true, but we would express that like this, A and not B. The not is what we describe as a monadic operator. In other words, it can only be attached to one statement at a time. But we can do some pretty crazy stuff with this, and by pretty crazy, well, it's not that crazy. If we have not A, this is a well-formed formula. So we can still attach a not in front of that, and that's a well-formed formula. It's a little redundant because if A is true, not A is false, not not A is true, but it's grammatically correct in our language. And you can have not, not, not A, and not, 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 not A. This can go on forever. You get the point. Okay. So we go back up here. Erase this. All right. So we can add on to this. Um, we might say not D. Is that a well-formed formula? Not B and C and D? The answer is that this is not a well-formed formula. It might seem like it is, and there's not really a good, clear reason in English why it's not. Uh, but in order for our language to operate, we pair well-formed formulas. So not B is an operator. That's attached to the AND. The AND links not B and C. Those need to be paired. So then this becomes a well-formed formula, and D is a well-formed formula. So this is true and this is true. And then the whole thing becomes a well-formed formula. We're going to start over again. 
So what we learn is that, remember the negation is monadic, the conjunction is dyadic. It is always combined with two well-formed formulas. So B and C is good. B and C and D, that's good as well. Uh, and this can get quite long. All right. The next thing we might want to say, so we have to, if we're going to extend past this without a negation, we're going to have to put these parentheses around there. B and C is true, or G is true. That's a well-formed formula. The or is like the and. It's dyadic. It needs to be combined to two well-formed formulas. And here we have the left side and the right side. Is this a well-formed formula? It is. Uh, our conditional statement that says if G is true, then F is true. And this becomes a well-formed formula as well. Is this a well-formed formula? The answer is that this is not a well-formed formula. The reason why it's not is because here is our if G then F. This is a single well-formed formula. Now remember this, if I had A or B, therefore if and only if T, this is not a well-formed formula because our B is attached to two operators. A well-formed formula can only be attached to one operator, and you have to layer those. So this would be okay. Without those parentheses, it would not be. But look up here, if this still seems confusing. This is a single well-formed formula, or WFF. I'm just going to say WFF from now on. This is a single WFF, just like B is, just like B is down there. And therefore, this needs to be, the G, therefore, F needs to be bracketed as well uh, with this one. And now, we have this WFF and this WFF conjoined with the OR. These are bracketed off to make a single other WFF, and these are linked to the T with the logical equivalence. If the brackets were in the other place, oh, my eraser is too big here. Just draw this over again. It didn't matter which one it was paired off to. This is also a WFF. Notice how we do this. Our order of bracketing goes parentheses, brackets, and then bracers. And then if we wanted to get really big, we just start over again. Just to make it clear. Okay. So these are our well-formed formulas. Um, last thing I'll talk about before this video closes off. Uh, I hope this makes sense. I think that you can, uh, you know, if, if this concept is a little tricky for you, uh, go ahead and just practice again and again and again. Uh, you can really extend this out. There's no limits to how long these statements can go. It's just a matter of uh, are you speaking a proper grammatical language. And that's, I've really covered all the grammatical rules that are in this language. Um, it's not that difficult once you get used to it. Um, the last thing to cover is uh, what, it, what is a main operator. Every sentence has layers of operators. And it's often important to be able to understand what the main operator is. Uh, every operator has a scope. And the scope of that operator extends through all the WFFs that it connects to. So this AND, for example, that connects the B and the C. So the scope of this AND is just B and C. The scope of this conditional is G, F. The scope of this logical equivalence, because it attaches all of this and this, the scope of our logical equivalence is all here. And the scope of our OR is all there. The scope of this OR connects the C and everything that it touches that's within this bracket that the OR touches. And it extends over the whole. We call this one our main operator 
because it has the biggest scope. Its scope extends across the whole argument. All right, so that, that concludes this video. We talked about well-formed formulas and main operators. And if you have any questions or if anything was unclear, leave a comment uh, and I will, uh, if, if you believe this video is totally confusing, I will make a new one. Uh, if you have specific questions, I will try to answer them. Thank you.